Ambassador Daniel Mahal. You are the Ambassador of Ireland to the United States since 2017. Before that, you were Ambassador to the UK and also to Germany. So you are familiar with the current problems uh, which the international arena is facing, not least Brexit. Yes. What is the problem for Ireland with Brexit? What are the major implications if Brexit goes through as it seems to be at the moment? Well, of course, the UK is our closest neighbor, closest partner. Uh, external relationships with the UK have been very positive in, in, in recent times, especially since the peace process in 1998, which has delivered peace to the island of Ireland and improved relations between Britain and Ireland and between Ireland North and South. So Brexit is an unwelcome development in that context because it complicates things for Ireland, for Northern Ireland, and for British Irish relations. With Northern Ireland, the issue is the border. Since the establishment of the European single market and the end of the troubles, the end of the conflict in Northern Ireland, the border in Ireland has been an open border, which people flow across, people goods flow across freely. Um, anything that would disrupt that open border would be deeply unwelcome and very risky. Irish point of view. So we're determined to preserve the open border. And in that we have the full support of our European partners. And the British government also agrees that there shouldn't be a border on the island of Ireland. The question is how to achieve continuation of the current open border that has served us so well in the past 20 years. And then on the wider front, Britain is our most important trading partner. And we want to see a very close relationship between the UK and the European Union in the future post-Brexit so that the trade and investment flows that have connected Britain and Ireland so productively over the last few decades are not um, in any way in Germany. Thank you. Did you expect something like Brexit? Was the goal right that Britain never really was a European country? Well, I lived in Britain for, uh, for three years before Brexit referendum and I was there for a year after the referendum. Of course, I understood that there had never been in Britain the kind of support for the EU that there is in Ireland, where at the moment almost 90% of Irish voters declare themselves in favour of EU membership. It was never the case in Britain. The British tabloid media has spent the uh, preceding 40 years um, poking fun of the European Union in very outrageous ways. And therefore, people's attitudes towards Europe were at best ambivalent. And therefore, it was always going to be a risky business to have a referendum in a country like the UK, where it was such a, a well of, of skepticism towards Europe. And that turned out to be the case. Um, also, the, uh, the campaign for leaving the EU used some very effective slogans, even if they were dubious in terms of their veracity. But nonetheless, they were effective in, in persuading people that leaving the European Union was the best option for Britain. In my view, EU. Brexit is a disaster for Britain, for, for the rest of the European Union, and, and for Ireland, but particularly for Britain. They're the ones who are going to be losing out from the benefits of EU membership. We will continue to have those benefits, but we will do our very best to minimize the negative impact on Ireland and to maximize any upsides. For example, it will make Ireland a more attractive location for foreign direct investment, including from the United States, and I just saw they, our central bank, announced that there are more than 100 financial services companies negotiating with the central bank to get a license to start operations in Ireland, presumably moving some of the European operations from London to Dublin. Thank you. People have said even if Brexit were stopped tomorrow, Britain has already weakened itself by the whole Brexit uh, conundrum. Would you agree with that and do you see that in the future, after Brexit, Britain's role in the world will be a lot diminished than what it was maybe last year and the year before? Well, I think Britain is a big enough country to be able to, uh, to make its own way in the world. But I do think it will lose out. I do think that um, Britain has benefited from EU membership, even if the electorate in Britain hasn't appreciated the benefits they've derived. Um, I do think that for a, a middle-sized country, uh, like Britain, um, combining with other countries with like mind in order to defend our interests more effectively on the world stage ought to be seen as a positive thing. But clearly that didn't weigh sufficiently.
sufficiently heavily with people when they when they were to vote uh, in 2016. They were, they were affected more by concerns about immigration and payments into the European budget and so forth. And this whole uh, notion of taking back control, um, to my mind, is a total travesty because we have control of all the things that are important to Ireland. We control our own defence, we control our foreign policy, we control our education, our health care, our social policies, and so forth. The European Union is effectively a, a body of legislation designed to promote the free flow of goods and services throughout the European Union. That's what Britain is trying to extract itself from. It's proving very complicated, especially if they want to continue to benefit from some of the advantages of having access to the 450 million people who live in the EU other than Britain. Thank you. You said yourself in your talk here at the Crescent Event series that you would see, you said that the European Union at the moment was in disarray. And do you see that Britain leaving will further weaken the EU? Will there be other countries tempt to imitate the British and do a similar thing? That is the kind of that notion that there are other countries queuing up to leave the EU is one of the great illusions of the, the pro Brexit lobby in, in the kingdom. There's no evidence that if anything, the Britain Britain's departure from the EU will will result in a determined effort on the part of the European Union to strengthen European integration and to ensure that it's uh, more fit for purpose uh, for the future. If you look at Ireland, for example, you might expect that after the crisis of uh, 10 years ago, many Irish people felt rightly that they had been required to take, uh, the, uh, take responsibility for the losses of, of, the, of the Irish banks, which were part of the European banking system and our assumption of those losses are, are a guarantee of the Irish banks was also underpinning the European banking system and, and it, it was a huge burden on the Irish uh, taxpayer. You might expect that that development plus the fact that Britain was leading to increased skepticism in Ireland towards the European Union. In fact the opposite has happened. The support for the European Union has gone up. I think that's happened generally and I think as countries now see that Brexit is really an exercise of trying to unravel the way the modern world works and trying to recreate things that will replace the free flow of goods that the European single market and the European Union uh, guarantees. That's actually a very, uh, very unwise thing to try to do. And I think the more we go down the road with Brexit, the more people elsewhere, including Ireland, will realize that Brexit is a, is a very disruptive process with very little gain at the end of the event. At the end of the day. But you are not saying that Britain leaving will eventually actually make the EU uh, more coherent and uh, uh, move closer together. But I think it's actually a good thing. I think it will prompt a renewed effort on the part of the remaining member states to strengthen the European Union. How that effort will turn out is another matter because, as you well know, uh, you start a negotiation about the future of the European Union and you will guarantee how it will end up. And then when you finally reach a conclusion, you have no guarantee that you'll be able to get that approved by the various member states, their parliaments, and in many cases, a referendum will be required. So there's no easy solution to the European Union's um, current uh, dilemmas. But I do think there will be a push to find ways of strengthening the EU to make sure that Britain's departure doesn't undermine all the things that have been achieved over the past 60 years of European integration. In your talk, you came across as quite an optimist. So in the end, you think a deal between Britain and the EU can be worked out so that Britain will still be associated in some sort of way? I think that's the most likely option, but sadly it's not, it's not guaranteed by any means. But I think uh, I'm still a believer in the ultimate uh, uh, triumph of pragmatism. Um, uh, I can see the difficulties facing the British government given the the um, deep divisions that there are now in British society about the Brexit question. But I still think that there's enough pragmatism in Britain and elsewhere in Europe to want to avoid the chaotic disasters that will befall us all if uh, Britain were to crash out of the European Union with no deal and therefore no way of, of managing future relations between the UK and the European Union. Ambassador Mulhall, thank you very much for your insights. Thank you very much for coming to talk to us here at UNC Chapel. You're very welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you.